Shirley Cloyes de Aguardi serves as Balkan Affairs Advisor to the Albanian American Civic League, a position that she has held since 1995. She has, together with her husband, former Congressman and Civic League President Joseph de Aguardi, been highly active in promoting awareness of Albanians' rescue of Jews during the Holocaust. Thank you, Dan. I want to thank uh, the Albanian mission, specifically uh, Ambassador Farid Hoxha and B'nai B'rith International for organizing this important panel and for inviting me to be a part of it. Um, my husband, former Congressman Jody Aguardi, and I uh, were actually fortunate to meet with Dan Mary Ashen uh, at B'nai B'rith's headquarters a number of years ago. And this is when we started talking about discussing the Albanian rescue of European Jewry, and Dan envisioned at that time making this the focus of a future panel. And at last, it's happening, and very heavy about that. To understand the Albanian rescue of European Jewry, I believe that it's necessary to understand the long history of Albanian religious tolerance and resistance to oppression that made the rescue possible and also how the Albanian response to the Holocaust came to be revealed and continues to be revealed. The unique role that Albanians played in Albania and which we now know Albanians in Kosovo also played in saving every Jew who either lived in Albania or sought refuge there is still in the process of being uncovered. And the uncovering of what happened during the Holocaust in Albania and throughout the former East Bloc will also involve a long-awaited reckoning with the communist era. For as soon as the countries of Eastern Europe emerged from the unspeakable horrors of Nazism, they were put under the yoke of communism, which suppressed any discussion of the Holocaust and any dissemination of information about it. This would not change until the former Soviet Union fell in 1990 and then the Albanian communist dictatorship in 1991. This is why the saving role of Albanians was not discovered until 1990. And I want to devote most of my remarks to the discovery and to a few of the significant themes that have emerged from it. The first of three important historical uh, developments without which we might not even be here today occurred in May of 1990 when the late Congressman Tom Lantos, a Hungarian Jew who survived the Holocaust and the founder of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, and former Congressman Jody Aguardi, the son of an Arbresh father, that's an ethnic Albanian from Italy, I didn't know him at that time, and a key, also a key member of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, decided to make a trip to Albania, the first U.S. officials to enter the country in 50 years. Diaguardi at the time was being wooed by the late communist dictator Rami Zalia when his regime heard uh, that Joe was planning to visit Kosovo where the Albanian majority was under a brutal Serbian occupation. Remember, it's now 1990. The Balkan Wars are in process. Joe decided he would not visit Albania unless he and Lantos went as a team, first to Kosovo to oppose the Serbian occupation, and then to Albania where they would urge the government to respond to the winds of democratic change. Rami Zalia seeking to ingratiate himself with Tom Lantos, he was the only Holocaust survivor in the U.S. government, presented Lantos and Diaguardi with a thick file from the state archives. It included photos, newspaper clippings, undelivered letters in many languages from Jewish survivors around the world to their Albanian rescuers. This information had been hidden for 45 years by the most totalitarian communist regime in the heart of Europe. Uh, as, you know, since the end of World War II, certainly. When Diaguardi sent these documents through an Israeli friend to Yad Vashem in July 1990, they were later authenticated. As a result, 69 Albanians have thus far been recognized by Yad Vashem as righteous among the nations. That number, by the way, should really be multiplied many times over, but there are too many rescuers and survivors died during the communist suppression of this information. Now, the second historical development leading to the revelation of the Albanian rescue and the recognition by Yad Vashem was on a parallel track at that time. One month later, after Lantos and Diaguardi were in Albania, Felicita Yakowel, 
daughter of Yosef Yakowel, an Albanian Jew who survived the Holocaust, who went on to lead the Jewish community in Albania during the communist era, had managed, she had managed to get a visit to see relatives in Greece. As soon as she arrived, she went straight to the Israeli embassy in Athens with a list of Jews living in Albania. And the ambassador there was amazed to learn about the indigenous Jews in Albania, the history that actually dated back to the burning of the Second Temple in Jerusalem in 70 CE. He helped her to secretly fly to Jerusalem by not stamping her passport. She then went directly to Yad Vashem, worked with authorities, handed them the list, and they began the preparation for an exodus of the Jewish community in Albania to Israel. On July 2nd, 1990, now almost a month later, shortly after the visit of Lantos and Diaguardi, Albanians entered foreign embassies seeking political asylum. The next month, 20,000 Albanians would flee to uh, uh, Italy uh, by boat. Six months later, Diaguardi would meet with Felicita's father in Tirana, and he would learn of Joseph Yakovel's plans to bring the Jews of Albania to Israel. This would ultimately happen in May of 91. Joe also learned that Joseph had been secretly trying to preserve Jewish identity in Albania by translating books written by Jewish writers, compiling a history of Jews in Albanian lands, and specifically what had happened in Albania during the Holocaust. He had done all of this at risk of imprisonment and also certain execution. He would have been judged an enemy of the state if discovered because the Stalinist regime considered Israel America's ally. Joseph's text entitled The Jews of Albania would lead to the third historical development. In the summer of 92, Harvey Sonner, a Jewish American philanthropist and the creator of the Righteous Gentile Program, would find the Yakowels in, at a, an absorption center for new immigrants to Israel. He had just brought a, a group of Greek rescuers to be recognized at Yad Vashem. He learned for the first time from the Yakowels that Albania was the only country in occupied Europe during World War II where Jews were not victims of the Nazi killing machine, as the ambassador mentioned earlier. He promised to finance Albanian rescuers to travel to Israel once the Yad Vashem verified their roles. Right away almost, 16 Albanians, they were Muslim, Roman Catholic, and Orthodox Christians arrived in Israel to receive medals for saving Jews during the Holocaust. Once there, they visited the absorption centers because they wanted to reunite with Albanian Jewish friends who they had not seen for two years. Moved by the warmth that was expressed there and by the Albanian lack of concern for religious affiliation, Sarner agreed to help publish and now ailing Yosef Yakowel's history of Albanian Jews. Joseph would die shortly thereafter and Sarner would turn his treatise into a paperback book entitled Rescue in Albania. There's not enough time to review the outcome of the historical convergence of these events and the work of the Albanian American Foundation in drawing international attention to the rescue, but I want to highlight two key moments here. In April of 94, after a private tour of the newly established U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington with the Kosovo government in exile, Joe and I discovered that the Albanian rescue was missing. We were surprised. We lobbied for its inclusion. A year later, February 1995, the Albanian American Foundation would celebrate the addition of Albania to the Righteous Among Nations section of the museum. Three Jewish congressmen, Ben Gilman, Tom Lantos, and Gerald Nadler, helped to make this a reality, spoke at the ceremony sponsored by our foundation. Two themes were articulated that Albania was the only country in Europe that could claim it had more Jews before World War II than after it, and that everyone, again, as her ambassador stated before, officials, farmers, every religion, economic class, had organized to save Jews. In 97, Harvey Sonner would grant the right to the Albanian American Civic League and Foundation to distribute rescue in Albania, adding forewords by Congressman Tom Lantos and Benjamin Gilman and an introduction by Congressman Diaguardi. Our reprinting and wide distribution of Sonner's book would become actually instrumental to helping Kosovar Albanians in the continuing crisis in the Balkans. By then, the Bosnian tragedy 
had already left 250,000 dead, 4 million displaced, while the late Serbian dictator Milosevic made his decade-long genocidal march across the Balkans. When the, the Bosnian War ended, Milosevic turned his attention to Kosovo. With the Kosovar population at risk of extermination, our foundation distributed rescue in Albania, beginning with Jewish leaders who understood before anyone else, Jewish leaders and Jewish communities, what was unfolding in the heart of Europe. For the first time, the unique role that Albanians played in saving European Jewry was reaching an international audience. Our foundation's efforts to expand awareness of the rescue would take many forms after that. Too many to, to recite here, uh, culminating, I would just want to add a recent article you may have seen by Joe Berger in the New York Times, and an event last month at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, bringing together Jewish leaders, Felicita Yaakowel from Israel, descendants of rescuers, members of Congress, and experts on the Holocaust. Now, why did Albania a country consisting primarily of Muslims and Christians rescued Jews. The answer lies in Albanian history. Albanians are the oldest inhabitants of Southeast Europe. They have survived centuries of invasion, occupation, expulsion, even genocide. Albanians are actually the descendants of the Illyrians. They, they, they survived six centuries under Roman rule. All throughout, they retained their legal norms, their culture, and their language, which are very distinctly different from their neighbors in Southeast Europe. Albanians use the Roman alphabet, their neighbors are Slavs who use the Cyrillic alphabet. All Albanians were either Roman Catholic or Orthodox Christians, except for a small number of Jews, when the Ottoman Turks now invade the Balkan Peninsula. Now we're jumping up to the half, first, the second half, I should say, of the 15th century. That's when, when the Ottomans came in, they set out to force conversion to Islam, but conversion was only nominal. Albanians have been living as Muslims, Catholics, Eastern Orthodox Christians, and Jews for a century in harmony because religion is secondary to Albanian identity. Now, no sooner did the Albanians merge now from 435 years of Turkish domination then they're suddenly divided by the so-called great powers, Austria, Hungary, Britain, France, Germany, Italy, and Russia. Serbia annexed half of the Albanian lands, including Kosovo. Other parts were given to Montenegro and Greece only because of the intervention of U.S. President Woodrow Wilson was the state of Albania created after World War I, now including only half the Albanian people who had emerged from the Ottoman Empire. As a result, for those of you who may not know, today three and a half million Albanians live in Albania and another three and a half million live outside, side by side, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, southern Serbia, and Chamria. When, the world, when World War II broke out and Mussolini's Italian fascists and the Nazis then invaded, Albanians refused to cooperate. There were approximately 300 Jews in Albania before the war. From the late 1930s until Allied forces defeated the Nazis, thousands of Jews were smuggled into Albania, often by Albanians outside the state, primarily from Kosovo. By the end of World War II, there were more than 2,000 Jews living in Albania. The principal reason for Albanians saving Jews was their history of religious tolerance. Based on the Kanun, a set of customary laws that had regulated Albanian conduct ever since their Illyrian ancestors arrived in the Balkan Peninsula thousands of years ago. With its underlying moral code of Bessa, emphasizing compassion, compassion and tolerance, the Kanun was passed down orally and enabled Albanians to resist and to survive centuries of persecution. As the ambassador pointed out earlier also, Bessa links personal honor to respect for and equality with others, and it involves uncompromising protection of a guest. There were no guests, uh, no foreigners, I should say. There was no modern Western concept of foreigner uh, in the Kanun, only the concept of guests. So when the Nazis were bent on genocide, it was natural for Albanians to save Jews. It is Bessa that underlies the Albanian rescue of Jews during World War II. Consequently, and this is the, the primary theme I, I now want to focus with my, with my conclusion. The Albanian rescue of Jews during the Holocaust was an Albanian act, not a religious act. The characterization that some have made of the Albanian act as a Muslim act I consider incorrect. This revision 
of Albanian history is also a bit problematic. Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic tried to identify Albanians as a mostly Muslim people in order to link them in the minds of Westerners with Islamic extremists in an attempt to alienate Western support for Albanians. And remember, it's, this is in our recent history. He went, you know, he was finally sent to The Hague in 2001. This is one of the reasons, because he used that approach, that the West failed to act immediately to save Kosovo Albanians during the Balkan Wars of the 1990s. And to this day, the painting of Albanians as a Muslim majority is used by Serbia's propaganda machine to support their government's effort to try to maintain sovereignty in the region, especially over Kosovo. I believe that when we mistakenly call the Albanian rescue of Jews during the Holocaust a Muslim act, we also, we, we end up inadvertently reinforcing the Serbian government's agenda. At the same time, though, we also reduce the opportunity to maximize the reality and benefits of the Albanian rescue for the future of Jewish communities around the world and for working to prevent genocide in our time. The task of preventing genocide in our time will be aided by examining why Albanians responded as they did to the Holocaust. While we have, we've made great technological advances in the 21st century, but we're way behind in moral advancement. While most of Europe turned its back on the extermination of European Jewry, Albanians demonstrated empathy, tolerance, self-sacrifice, and courage. These are the elements that must be integrated at all levels of education around the world so that differences of race, religion, and ethnicity no longer engender violence and death. Understanding the Albanian example can strengthen the resolve of peoples everywhere to end mass atrocity, which I believe is the most important human rights issue of our time. Thank you very much. Thank you.